Hi, Sue Borison here from your team media. And today I'm here with CL Brady, who is in college right now. And we are going to talk to her about her journey from high school to one college and now to where she is today. Um, mm -hmm. And CL, I, I'm so grateful that you're willing to come on and talk about this because I think um, people listening will realize that there's more than one path, right? Right, exactly. Okay, so you start out in high school and you're a strong student and you get into the school you wanna go, and then what happens? So I applied and enrolled in my first choice university. And then, um, so I was going through the motions of fall semester. So I was like attending class, um, you know, going to social events, all that stuff. And then um, it came down to right about winter break when I started to figure out how to register for the next semester and how to pay for the previous fall semester. So um, before I enrolled, I was uh, looking at financial aid packages from all of the different schools that I was admitted to. And so uh, Loyola had gave me a really opp great opportunity to take out the credit plus loan as well as like a really nice um partial scholarship so that that was the plan like before like when i enrolled um but we just my family didn't really know that we had to take there were qualifications before you take out the credit plus loan so um Yes, like from like September to December, like for finals, I was just kind of like figuring out how to pay for college, essentially. So, and that, so that, did that that dominated your first semester experience of literally trying to figure out how to pay for college? It definitely dominated my last half, like before finals and before, because everything was kind of like in like a for Colombo, at first, like I got there, it was a big city. We were traveling. Um, like I had worked the summer before, so <clears throat> excuse me. I yeah, I worked the summer before, so um, I had like a nice pocket change to like have the cost of living in Chicago and still have some fun. But um, yeah, when it got down to the wire, I'd say October. That was when, like, I started going to financial aid in the bursar office and the register office a lot more. And what were I the would say, what were the criteria for the college plus loan that you didn't know about prior? Uh, the simply the credit part, <laughs> like the we knew that you'd have to have credit, but um, we didn't know that there was like a cap on it. So that was um. It, it kind of felt like I was being gaslit a little bit. Maybe that's because I didn't have like the financial literacy from high school to know. But yeah, I'd say it definitely dominated my second half of first semester. Okay, so let's move from the, the disappointment of having to struggle. At yeah. <laughs> so at 18, you're put in a position to try to figure out all of the finances for college, which in a lot of homes, the parents are in a position to take care of that and maybe mm -hmm. have already dealt with it themselves. And so it's it's not as yeah. neat as family. Um, mm -hmm. So then you, you feel overwhelmed by the amount of debt that you're gonna have to take on and what happens then? So, um, yeah, I get home and I'm searching and I was like, well, I can't stop school, like I'm, not going to stop school because I'd never probably go back to it. So I was searching for colleges around my house. But the thing about you owing money to another school is that you have to pay that off before they release your transcripts. So it's a huge barrier for you to like jump from one university to another university. So I was like, okay, I need to like explore options at community college because they're open enrollment and I will be able to like get official transcripts later, but I can like at least submit my unofficial transcripts and continue school for now. 
So I was looking at scholarships because I was like, if I'm going to be home, I'm not going to pay for school. So, <laughs> so uh, I was um, fortunately like linked with this really awesome program. It's called, do you mind if I name the name? Please. Okay, it's called the Mendel Scholars Academy, and it's um, based off the humanities. So if you have a major in the humanities, like I'm a public health major, but at Tri-C, I'm an associate of arts, like degree pursuant. So yeah, so a wonderful family friend like works at Tri-C, and her and her husband told me about this great program that their nephew was in. So it was like this like kind of hidden gem of the college. So, and I, I'm gonna graduate next semester as a Mendel Scholar um, Academy. Take a second and just clap for you. Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, and I, I love it. Like it's, we have different, like a set curriculum. It's an honors course curriculum and um, since it's for the humanities and like the Mendel family of um, Cleveland is our Eva is our sponsor and that's how we get the scholarship so it's very um yeah like humanities and like liberal arts driven and we have like different requirements for the program so like last semester I took a civic engagement course and we were paired with the community partner in Cleveland. And we basically took a whole semester developing um, like a tool and a project talking about um, like what civic engagement in Cleveland looks like and what Who people are doing. Uh, Cleveland Votes. Nice. So they're, yeah, and they're part of, um, I think Cleveland Neighborhood Progress. So, so what happens at the end uh, when you finish this program? You have an associate's degree? Yes. In the fall, I'll have an associate's of arts. And then what do you, do you have a plan for after that? Or what do you do after that? Yes. Yeah, so like, I'm kind of, it feels like my senior year of high school again. So I'm like applying to transfer to other schools. But with the program that I'm in, um, there's different pipelines. So. Um, I'm in a program that allows me to go to Tri-C in case right now. And if I like stay that course, I potentially be able to go to CSU, uh, sorry, Case Western with like a good scholarship and, you know, me passing the classes would be like, take my application further. And then I'm also on another pipeline called the CSU Continuing Scholars, and it's for to be admitted into the honors program at CSU. Um, Cleveland State University and Case Western Reserve University are both. Yes, there. and then I'm exploring other options at different colleges, but those are the ones I'm investing most of my time in because they have really good programs for my major. So. And and being in community college for a year and a half, is that what it will be before you're done? Did yeah, you, a year and a half. Did you find the academics to be challenging? Yes, so I have to take honors courses for Mendel and also my honors uh, scholarship. And so it's definitely, it was definitely an adjustment because, um, First of all, there is like this myth that I think I had in my head, I will say admittedly, that, you know, it'd be way easier than Loyola, which is like a private Jesuit institution. But it definitely gave me a run for my money. Like, it definitely did. And it, it, it's college. Like, it's college courses with like collegiate standards academic standards and so even this semester my hardest class was definitely my statistics class so yeah I'm definitely challenged every every semester well, I think the myth that you're debunking is probably out there for many of us and so yeah. Cuyahoga Community College was a great landing place for you it sounds like definitely 
So let's yeah. go back. Let's go back to um, that first semester. You did have to take on debt for that first semester. So how is mm -hmm. that going now for you to pay it back? So yeah, I'm slowly chipping away at it. Um, well, me and my dad have been chipping away at it, and then my mom has been like looking for like other programs to just just get our main task now is just to get the official transcript and then whatever happens happens our our goal was for me to get back to Loyola at first but now it's just kind of like let's just get it just get the get the necessary documents and keep it pushing so all right well CL I want to tell you that um I'm so grateful for you for sharing your story because I think it it is many people's stories yeah and um and you turning it around and taking ownership of your future is so exciting to hear about. We all wish you the best, and we can't wait to hear what you do with your next stage. So thanks thank so much. Thank you for so much. <laughs>